I'm sitting here with Dr. Jerry Purnell and Larry Niven, who uh, have are working on a new book and uh, have a book that's coming out in paper book. Back. Paper back. Up. back. <laughs> um, shame on me. What's the name of the last year's book? I forgot. Uh, it was. Uh, it was the Escape second. From Escape, Escape from Hell. Escape from Hell. It's the sequel to it. They, they signed a copy for us. How could you forget that? Not only did they sign a copy, they signed a copy in which they said, "You sing better than we do." If you recall, we were the singing brothers at last year's um, yes, uh, book fair. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sitting here, not singing, with Dr. Jerry Purnell and Larry Niven. He's not singing. And I'm not singing. Um, last year, whose book, uh, Escape from Hell, was the follow-up to Inferno. So I want to ask how that book is doing. And I want to also ask uh, Dr. Purnell and uh, Mr. Niven what they're working on next. It's open to you. We're going to, uh, we go, we're going to threaten the earth with something big. And then try to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> we, it turns it, out that hitting the earth with something big is the most lucrative thing we've ever done. Ah, <laughs> hit him again. Twice. <laughs> Twice. Both Lucifer's hammer and footfall. So why not do it again? Oh, man. Only this is more about what you might do if you knew it's coming. If you knew it was coming at a baked an atom bomb or something of the sort. We've, we've had at least 30 years since Lucifer's Hammer, uh, and there has been considerable progress. Yeah. Uh, NASA has been detecting objects bigger than a kilometer yeah. uh, and, and eliminating most of them as threats. Got it. So if you suddenly discover that something's coming, what might you do? And given the real situation in the world, what might happen if you do it. Is it uh, more of a sociological kind of, uh, you know, how does society... A you lot know? of politics, I'm yeah. afraid. Got it, yeah. got it. Yeah. A lot of it is politics. Because but I'm sure the world would cooperate completely with no problems whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try the Congress of the United States as an example, and NASA, and, you know, it's, it, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the problem. We no longer know how to do things like that, do we? No, unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, quick question, was was From Hell an itch that just needed to be scratched 30 years later, or did they just you know write you a check and said, all right, boys, you know, keep it going? I think Jerry went on thinking about the theological problems uh, long after I had finished the book. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I, I was done. I, I came up with one scene that I wanted uh, as an opening, and I did it almost immediately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that just sat there for 20 years. Larry wanted to do Inferno because he had read Dante and wanted to do something with it. And it was actually the second book we did. It was not the second we started. We started Oath of Fealty as our second book, and about three chapters into it, Larry said, I really want to do a sequel to Inferno. To Dante's Inferno, only do it with a modern science mm -hmm. fiction writer as the... I hooked him. And <laughs> I'd, I'd never thought of doing that. It would not even have occurred to me, but... You don't have the arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I folded in a lot of Thomistic philosophy. I, but we got it done. Remember, we're doing it fairly early. And I really didn't get all the implications of Vatican II into into the first book. Now, Inferno sold well. In Simon and Schuster's science fiction history, the three top-selling books, and this is his books, of all they ever published in science fiction at Simon and Schuster were Moat, Inferno, and Sagan's Contact, in that order. So... They did very well, and um, I just wanted to, so I brooded about it for 20 years and decided I really wanted to fit um, um, Vatican II into what was going on, and Larry almost immediately came up with the, with the idea of a scene in the Grove of the Suicides, and I said, gee, if you're going to have a suicide, I know perfectly well who's got to be the the, the suicide character, and he said, who? And I said, Sylvia Plath. Ooh. And um, he looked at a couple of her works 
po poems in her novel. Yeah, that's yeah, it. So. I, I was clueless. You know, <laughs> I didn't know who she was. <laughs> Well, I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to tell them that, but yeah, he didn't even know who Sylvia Plath was, and I thought, yeah, I had, to, I had to look it up. Right. Uh, Jerry often has to set me doing research. Right. All right, well, uh, thank you guys very much for joining us on NeverEndingPanel.com. We wish you success and good luck with your new book and look forward to reading it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.